Uh, so I, I did a lot of track days growing up with my uncle, about 10 years of uh, Tony's track days and learned a lot there. And uh, he actually got into Super Street last year and he's like, hey, we should we should really start getting into the racing uh, side of things. And I came, you know, spectated for, you know, three, four events and I was, I was hooked already. And then showing up this year and started the, you know, first round and just kind of fell in love with it and started, you know, getting better, learning more, learning faster. And, you know, obviously with some guys that are at, at my same level, um, so it was kind of cool to, to be able to learn from other guys besides the people I normally ride with on the track and uh, or track days at least and it's just uh, it's become a become an addiction to say the very least well it's a it's a bigger step it's um, the same group of guys same people helping you um, but there's a lot more adrenaline because now it's a little more competition you're not riding with street riders you're riding with people that do this every weekend so you got to stay focused but the best part of the whole thing is that everyone here is like a family member if you need help if you need pointers tips whatever it is you can ask and they've got the answers so it's been absolutely amazing and I'm coming off of uh, a, I wasn't going to race this year but then uh, my lovely wife decided to let me do it and um, I bought the bike from none other than Scott Green Greenwood, and um, he gave me some pointers, and here I am giving it my best shot. It's it's great. Um, it's not intimidating at all. Uh, there's a lot of coaches that are around. Everybody's super willing to help. Um, it, there is definitely competition. You know, there's a couple of us that are kind of sitting around the same lap times, which is cool. But we're gradually getting better and better, and kind of like meeting the same expectations as each other. So it's definitely definitely got a lot of good competition. Uh, again, you know, everybody's great, helpful, the, the coaches, and um, it it definitely makes you want to have more wants you to get faster uh, you know any, any any weekend you come if you can click off a second it's great you know I'm down you know 10 seconds from when I started so uh, it's just cool to see the actual improvements you can make with other people well um, I'm already shaken about going up to amateur um, good friend of mine Samir is on the twin to this bike and of course I'm watching him close because I want to be in that group and I want to chase because as a lot of the the fast guys will say that if you want to go fast you got to ride with fast riders and that's what I'm hoping to do um, the, the the group is going to be a lot thicker um, but I'm hoping that I can at least at least not be the back marker as they call it um, but I want to get out there and I want to just shave maybe a tenth or two off every single weekend and you know hopefully people will start seeing me and knowing who I am and you know I'll get a name for myself and be in the middle of the group anyway. Uh, I mean, I, lo I do love club racing. Um, definitely get the license. Uh, see if I can step up through the classes. Um, can't say how many bikes because uh, my wife's listening to this. So uh, for right now, we're going to stick with one bike and see if we can't just, you know, get the license and move forward with it. Round three went out on my old Ducati in GT. Uh, got a, in a short period of time, a very, very uh, large lead was really, really nice. Uh, at about lap five, six, can't really recall. Had some uh, some engine trouble. The Ducatis are usually very, very, and the ones we build are incredibly reliable. We just uh, have, I think we've traced it down to some deliveries of some bad components, and that can make for a bad day. So it did, and uh, I went home to my house for Sunday, picked up uh, a 748 that I have, I've ridden a lot over the years, brought it out of the living room, dolled it up, dusted it off, and went out and rode that for, for Sunday. During that time, a guy who used to race here was riding this bike around and track daying, and he uh, was expressing that he shouldn't be doing it, and I, I agreed with him, and then asked him, hey, why don't you sell your bike? <laughs> so he said, yeah, and uh, before you know it, I, I got a bike as I'm going home with. And uh, spent about a month working on on that, getting it to, uh, to the way I like it. And uh, now here we are. Sure, so uh, the Classic was a very good weekend. Uh, I think I got podiums in all three races. Uh, GTL, lightweight super bike, and lightweight super sport. Uh, actually pulled off the win in super sport. Uh, so it's always fun to get the, the nice big plastic trophies. Uh, a little bit different than our usual medals. But yeah, I had a great time. Uh, seemed like there was a few more people in the grids than normal. Uh, so it was good to race with some new people. Uh, 
so far so good. Uh, weather's been good. Everything's kind of fallen into place pretty decent. Um, GTL, I kind of been struggling, falling back after the halfway mark a little bit. Um, like to be able to move forward a little bit more in the late race stuff. But um, shy of that, been having a great time doing it and just dealing with whoever I can deal with. <laughs> So round three was it was a fun race. Uh, it was uh, I had a little trouble early on, and I got shuffled back to fifth place after I held I had fell off for uh, a few laps until I made the mistake of looking back on the straight, and I gave him just enough room to get by me. Uh, a couple more laps, and our, our buddy from the ECK team, uh, Steve Heider, came through on me, and Ricky and uh, Brett were already way out in the lead. But then uh, Brett had a little issue, and I saw he was out, and the podium was still a chance, so I, I put my head down halfway through it, was able to take Steve back, and even though Bill had a major gap on us, uh, we both fought back through to him, and I think it was the second to last lap we, we got around him, because he was just getting tired. Uh, but So I, I ended up in second, fighting back from fifth. It, it was a wonderful finish for me. <laughs> Um, honestly, just trying to work at that, like I said, end of, end of the race pace is, is really a struggle for me in GT. Um, those longer races, it's, you know, I can work out all I want, and uh, it's, it's still a struggle at the end. So I need to definitely work on that and uh, keep the balls rolling for sure. But, um, you know, I'd like to see some, some 16s and 15s possibly by the end. That would be ideal. Um, and, you know, be running closer to the old man and, and uh, closer to the guys up front for sure. I'm definitely falling back where I, sh where I shouldn't. You know, I start out real strong and uh, and it's just, I'd like to stay up there. You know, that's the biggest goal for the year. Uh, so with it being halfway through the season, um, we're doing pretty well in the points. Not as well as I would have liked in uh, in the super bike class uh, because I uh, had to miss that due to a crash in GTL back in round two. Uh, but we're still, we're still fighting. Um, I think we got a pretty good chance and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, as long as the performance stays up um, and the tires stay sticky, these Pirelli tires, uh, then I think we'll, we'll finish off the year pretty well. Well, the plan uh, with the new 660 is obviously put a leg over it. As you do this interview, I have yet to ride it, so I don't really know. I hear they're really good. Uh, Seacoast Sports Cycles uh, helping me out with all the extra stuff that an old guy's not used to using, which is uh, a lot of electronic assistance aids, which I'm not sure I'm going to like or not, but uh, we're going to find out. We'll go out and ride, and I've been ar around here a long time, so I know my way around, but on something different, there does uh, take some time in getting used to it. For all the old Ducatis and all the years that I've ridden them, they, uh, they just seem like home, and when you know a bike, you know, a plus or minus one model to the next whatever. The V-Twin was something that I've ridden, so this should be provide a, a decent challenge. It's definitely a secret sauce. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be a combination of everything. It's it's good fitness, being able to muscle the bike for the whole 20, however the heck long it is, 25, is that what it is, 20? It's long. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's just, it is dicing through lap traffic and, and dealing with that. I, I do struggle with that as well as aggression um, and being able to make moves quick in lap traffic. Uh, I definitely, definitely could do better at that for sure. Yeah, so round three. Uh, the classic uh, it was a great round. Uh, was able to uh, uh, get third in the race behind Ben Glady and uh, Eli. It was an awesome race. Uh, I try to race consistently and every week, and uh, very happy of the results. Obviously, I'm leading the the championship, which is pretty pretty cool. And uh, yeah. So round three, it was that was probably one of the best rounds I've had so far. I got a new personal best of 18.5, uh, which I wasn't even expecting, like a 19 for the beginning of the season. So only getting that for um, like the beginning of the season is like insane to me. Yeah, like in uh, 500 Super Sport, me and uh, Renee get battling together a little bit, and then I'm starting to work my way through traffic a little better because we keep hitting lappers. But once I get through them, then it uh, it gets to be a pretty good race. But uh, yeah, since she always comes out on top, but 
you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. But yeah, it's it's been a good time. It, it's been going all right. We've definitely uh, I've switched my front tires to the 120 front, and it's it's been a world's difference. It's, it gives me so much more feel in the front, and uh, my pace certainly is showing that. I went from last week, could barely do some 20s, and I went down to an 18.3, which was insane, chasing Renee. And, you know, we really want to try to beat Renee, but Adam and Renee are really pushing me to keep up with them. They're flying. Uh, round three started off okay. Um, I uh, I managed to pull one third place in GT500. Um, Super Sport was was a, actually a struggle in round three. Uh, I I broke some stuff in the transmission, so I was having a lot of transmission slipping. Um, GT500 was the first race, and that was the only one that really I had the full use of the bike. Um, so I had a lot of popping out of gear, things to deal with, things like that. So the whole round was was pretty tough. Um, 500 Super Sport, I managed, I think it was fifth. Um, like I said, GT500, I was in third. Uh, Super Bike was sixth. Uh, and... Moto 3, I think I ended up sixth. So it was pretty overall pretty tough round, but I had some mechanical issues, um, you know, and had to ride around those. That was a little scary, but you know, we we were able to sort it enough to where I could get through the weekend. Um, so the bike went off uh, for the break to to get some transmission work. So it uh, ended up with a a race cut transmission. So we're we're uh, we're working on that and. It's, uh, the gear changes are much better. <laughs> Rest of the season is definitely uh, try to win the 300 championships again. And uh, on the 400, both the 500 championships and Moto3, I want to try to be in the top three of the championship. Uh, so riding the 400 is, you know, for me, um, I, we have to push them pretty hard. You know, so high RPMs quite often. Um, that's some of the things that uh, we were trying to work on with gear changes and stuff like that. Um, you know, to keep the RPMs up because, and you know, for me, uh, you know, you're gonna push them real hard. You know, in order to make the 400 produce, there's there's not a lot of things you can do, um, or that I, you know, that I've done at least to make them go faster. Um, just because if you want to fit in all the classes, particularly 500 Super Sport, you're pretty limited on what you can do to them anyway. Um, so, you know, at least for me, you know, it's it's pushing it harder. Um, you know, later braking. Higher corner speed—that's that's typically my strong suit, at least. Um, you know, because in a straight line, they just don't have a ton of power. Um, some of the younger kids, you know, obviously, I give up a few, you know, a few pounds to them, so uh, that probably helps for them in a straight line. But overall, I would say they're just—they've learned how to push the bike harder as well, um, and they're just, you know, they're fast everywhere. In a straight line in the corners, just they get on the throttle so early, um, you know, things like that. So, in my opinion, I'd say just you know, pushing the bike to its limit, you know, often. And they're, you know, fortunately, they're pretty bulletproof. You can push them hard and they work hard, you know, as hard as you work. The 400 is definitely, uh, it's something. I prefer the R3. But the 400 just has the power, it's got the handling, and it's, it's just the bike to be on if you want to win in that class. Yeah, so I got to take a few steps actually. So I got to like work on braking points still because I uh, this bike isn't exactly the fastest one out there. So I got to worry I got to worry about carrying more roll speed than everyone else and uh, getting like more leaned off the bike so I can actually like feel what I'm doing and um, 
I don't know, I just gotta work on uh, carrying more speed pretty much and uh, trying to get better drives out of corners because when you got it the, one of the slowest bikes out there, it's hard to compete on the straightaway, especially when everyone keeps pulling away from you. It kind of gets like discouraging, but when you catch them by the corners, it's not too bad. So just gotta figure out where their weaknesses are and where your strengths are to then capitalize on them. Hopefully that'll help me get maybe into the 17s by either today or next round is really what I'm going for to uh, hopefully eventually take a win and uh, maybe even get a first place in a championship would be amazing. So. So GTL went really good today. Um, okay start, kind of got caught up in a gaggle in turn one. Uh, ended up around fourth on the first lap. Kind of got stuck behind Bill Cool for a little bit. A little bit off pace, allowed uh, after the first two laps, uh, Nick Layton and Ricky to pull a 10 second gap on us. And after that, I got around Bill and just started chipping away every single lap, running consistent 15s, low 15s. Broke down like to a 15 two by the end of that race and uh, started chipping away. And uh, by about halfway flag, I was up with uh, Ricky and Nick and uh, passed Ricky on the outside too, uh, thanks to some lappers and uh, caught Nick. He blew turn one and after that it was just head down, pushed to the end of the race and finally came away with my first win of the year in the GTL class and it definitely hindered me a little bit for the next race because I was tired after that one. For uh, But really happy with the result and definitely never give up. The GTL this round was probably the most fun fun race of my life. Uh, best start I've ever had. I got the whole shot off the line, and I'm like, all right, leading for one lap. This is great. Lap two, waiting, like, okay, where's Ricky? Where's Eli? They're not coming by. Lap three, four, five. It's like, wow, what's, what's going on here? Uh, so I ended up leading for 10 laps until I made my own mistake, looking at uh, some of my friends on the wall, looking to see what I had for a gap and missed my brake marker into one. So I ended up going through the mole trap and uh, let Eli and Ricky through. Came right back out behind him. Uh, it took me a lap to get right back onto to Ricky's tail and 
fighting through traffic. We were going back and forth. He'd get a gap, then I'd get right back on him, then I would get messed up with traffic. And we got to three lappers coming into turn two, and I thought he was going to drive out on the outside, so I was going to try to square it up hard from 1A and shoot under him in two. And I, just, I pushed it a little too hard and lost the front over one of the seams there. It was still some pressure on the bar. It went off, nice easy low side, but it was one of the most fun races of my life. I knew PB almost every lap, consistently running fast and holding off Ricky for more than half a race. <laughs> Yeah, so yesterday's race, super single race, uh, was also a pretty good race. I did not have a quite good start, but I was able to uh, finish behind uh, um, a gunner. Uh, one of the fast riders, and uh, so happy of the results, came second. Uh, again, I ran consistent, consistently rap uh, uh, lap time, so same lap times all the uh, every, every every race, and uh, so happy and, and still leading the championship. So it's great. All right, so yesterday's race, it was um, another great race. We. Um, we had, there was a lot of traffic actually yesterday because there was an amateur group in front of us so we had to pass all of them and she, uh, yeah, the leader got a little like further ahead than I did past the lappers a little sooner than I was able to so she kind of got away, got away but it's um and it was a good race and uh, I just kind of tried to stay in my own pace tried to keep off everyone behind me because Lucas is coming up fast and uh, you know, we're just gonna try and keep consistent 18s which is what I was working on yesterday and was able to do so I really hit all my goals yesterday and uh, it was a decent day and I'm looking for another good one today so uh, yesterday GT 500 started off the day um, that was okay uh, I made some gearing changes after Friday's practice um, and I was I tried that in the race and it didn't really seem to work out for me uh, you know just looking at data and thought some areas would would help um, ended up third in GT but I was still kind of personally struggling compared to you know my normal pace I was still off a little bit so for 500 super sport I went back to you know where I where I've gone fast done some fast times and uh, still kind of struggled so you know I'm having issues uh, not sure not sure what it is so we're we're working on that and sorting through the data uh, and so in 500 super sport I ended up fifth um, but for some reason it seems like you know that second race of the day uh, which is 500 super sport I usually kind of things don't fare as good like something you know either I box the start or you know uh, you know, just something happens to where I don't produce as well as I should but uh, yesterday was a struggle unfortunately in 500 super sport you know terrible start and then just uh, not not going as fast as I'd like to for sure yeah, so uh, obviously um, being part of uh, Penguin Racing School, it helps you get faster because we get to coach and at the same time we coach ourselves. So I think my from last year to this year, my riding skills have improved because I've managed to get focused and to, um, you know, I have all my reference points at the track to be able to brake late, accelerate early. So I've been working a lot of that. And I've been doing a lot of riding as well, whether it's motocross or supermoto. So I think that also um, reinforces the skills of uh, uh, on this track. Uh, dash today was, I mean, way better than I expected. Uh, this is my first weekend on the 600. Learned a lot. Me and my dad, Shane Narbonne, Corey Hildebrand, definitely just got the spike set up today. And it took a lot of hard work and a lot of testing and a lot of help from Stowe from Michelin with everything, with tires, Kip giving me some data. And just took a lot of hard work and effort. And, you know, the first race I did today, I ended up with fourth. And I kind of didn't have a lot of confidence coming into this. So I was really tired, especially two weeks ago being in the hospital with three broken ribs and a punctured lung. I didn't know how well I was going to be doing today. And um, 12 laps on that bike is a lot compared to the Motard. It's 
a lot heavier. It's a lot more power, a lot more respect. And, uh, you know, to come out with top three on my first ever time running 14-2, um, you know, great start from the third row. Got up to about third by the end of the first lap. And after that, it was um, just back and forth. Ricky was giving me one hell of a battle you know he was throwing it up trying to do his classic Rick Doucette pass and six on me and I just tried shutting it down every single lap and you know he he gave he kept me honest the whole entire time and I'm that's that's what he's done for my whole entire career and that's why I'm grateful for that I've been able to race for him for a long time so you know top three uh looking to get some more next weekend yeah, the, the bike's pretty much back together and might be running naked again. I've, I've messed up that body work in at least three crashes now, and it might be a little not quite salvageable, salvageable at this point. Uh, so I will be racing tomorrow. It might be naked. I did get back out today for race six. Uh, my, my teammate, Bill Coolhan, let me borrow his bike because his bike was fine. He was injured. I was fine. My bike was injured. Uh, and I was only able to make it out to the restart of the race, so in, in the end I got DQ'd, but I still had fun and got second place on a borrowed bike. Um, tomorrow we have uh, Lightweight Super Sport, which I, I think we still have a, a good shot at uh, getting a good place, and it's only a couple guys out there that will give me some trouble. So difference between the Motard 600, uh, obviously the weight and the power is a whole a lot different. Um, the Motard's very forgiving. Same with the 600, but not as much. The Motard, you can kind of do as much as you want on it to a certain level, and it will respect you and give you so a lot of warning signs. And you know, you can throw it around and just you know, to a certain extent, just wide open everywhere and take these wide swooping lines to carry momentum and get just jam on the brakes and on the. 600, you gotta respect it a lot more. It's a lot bigger of a bike. It's a lot more power. Um, you know, it's a lot different lines. There's a lot more point and shoot instead of carrying that momentum through the corners. And, you know, you just gotta learn how to, you know, get that difference between, especially like when I'm hopping from one to the other, I'm GP on one bike and now I'm standard back of the Mozart. And, you know, it's a lot different gear patterns. Everything's different. So that thing is a lot, you have to respect it a lot more than this thing. So. So got to keep on, make sure you're weighting the pegs, make sure you're using your core and you know, this thing kind of, you can use, you use that stuff, but just not as much as a lot more upper body on the motor, just throwing it around everywhere you want. And that thing got to be using that correct body position, correct body movement. And you know, I'm happy with uh, how I've transitioned to both and just, you know, it's very, once you get it down, it's easy, but uh, it definitely would take a lot.